very much for watching this video. My client for today is Ashton. Ashton has done some lessons with a previous instructor before in a different vehicle. This is the first time he's driven this car. Um, if you tell everyone what your driving experience is so far. Okay, so I've had um, lessons on and off since like 2017, um, like September. And then, yeah, and I, I'm learning in, in a, in obviously in a diesel car. And then um and and then since then I've like had I've I've had up to like two year I, I mean a a, a um, year break, mm -hmm. and then then I've had a different instructor um, like the year after, but then I had lessons him on and off and then then I had a different instructor again and then yeah and then now I finally put my driving test for April the twenty second so yeah I'm just... so fingers crossed praying um that all goes well and. Okay, yeah. The main thing with Ashton, as he's found out at the moment, driving a petrol car now has become a little bit more of a pain, yeah. um, simply because he's used to the diesel technique. Um, as a lot of you already know, I hate the diesel technique of pullaways. I prefer you to use gas first because it prevents the stall. Um, yeah. So it's getting his head around that. So I don't expect it to be perfect when it comes to the um, pullaways. There may be a couple stalls along the way. We'll give that sort of allowance simply because it's a new car that he's not used to okay so test lasts for 38 to 40 minutes during that time we're going to do one maneuver plus possibly the emergency stop if i say nothing assume i want it to go straight or follow the road signs okay. we're also not going to do the show me tell me questions simply because he doesn't know them on this car okay so fingers crossed whenever you're ready start the car and we'll go for a drive come on this is it now It will make that stay. Ashton does really well here to hold further back. That allows the learner car to get past with some more ease. Great planning. Ashton picks up his first driver fault here for undue hesitation. There is nothing coming from his right, but he's giving way to his left. Because of that, I ask him this question. What type of junction is this? As he got the question correct, he gets marked down as undue hesitation as there was no one behind. If there were to be people behind, it would have been a serious fault, as it would have been too many hesitations at the same junction. If he answered the question incorrectly, so i.e. stating that it was a T-junction, then that would have been a serious fault due to not being aware of the type of junction. So it would either be due to road signs or road markings, depending on the situation at the time.
as I'm sure you've got better things to do than see us stuck in traffic, we're going to fast forward when this traffic light goes to green. Is that a, um, what's he doing? Um, is that a serious fault? Uh, no. Ashton's a bit slow off the line here. He doesn't get enough power through the car, and then the traffic light changes. Because of that and impacting on people behind, it wasn't a sudden enough break to be dangerous, but it gets marked down as appropriate speed as a driver fault. This is why I don't like the diesel technique of pullaways, because you're more likely to have these issues. Again, we're going to fast forward to when this traffic light goes back to green. Great job spotting this car, Ashton. Gets driver fault for control accelerator for the over rev between the gear. Ashton stays in second gear for quite some time here, therefore picks up the driver fault for control gears. It's important to go through your gears as and when you can. Also, as you can see, he's positioned slightly too far to the right. So when this car goes past him, they are very, very close. So he also picks up a driver fault for driving normal position. to fast forward to the point where Ashton is entering the Great Cambridge roundabout. Again Ashton's pull away is quite slow causing people to cut him up from the left and right lanes but he is still in first gear so he picks up a driver fall for control gears. Plus he's made this weird lane change, personally I would have stayed in the lane that we were in but this time he's moved from lane 3 to lane 4 without a mirror check so therefore picks up the use of mirror, change of direction, driver fault. Now because we did that random lane change we're now really far out of position. He notices that and even states this. I think I have to have a good run around with a kid. So as you can see, he correctly identifies that he is in the wrong lane and acknowledges that the best thing to do is to do another lap of the roundabout. And if he does that, perfect, no issues. But he doubts himself and you can see he still attempts to try to move into the left lane. We are going far, far too slow for a roundabout of this size and therefore due to being dangerous and drifting really without knowing what's going on he does pick up a serious fault for progress appropriate speed if only he trusted himself and did another lap that situation and that serious would never have happened
and as you can hear again the poor engine is working rather hard so another driver fault for control gears does a bit of a random lane change here he should still be in lane two moving into lane three really does make things difficult as he's having to change lane again to come off the exit he is checking his mirrors he's checking his blind spots as well so it's not actually a driver fault but he's making life a lot harder for himself but again he does pick up a driver fault for use of gears simply because he is overworking the engine For me, overly slow, but there isn't anyone behind, so no fault recorded. After 100 yards, turn left, Windmill Road. Turn left. Reverse back two car lengths, keeping it close to the curve. Then do not worry about the driveways on this occasion, you can block. can't fault Ashton for his observations he is really really good his shoulder checks are very obvious he's checking very often his positions of the curb is very good great maneuver Again, brilliant observations. So you may hear that ticking noise, and that's his left indicator. Now, he's got to get that indicator off before this next road on the left, otherwise it's a serious fault. So unfortunately he picks up a serious fault there for signals correctly. What you've got to think is any car waiting to come out of that side road that sees his left indicator may pull out thinking that he's going to turn into it. And that's it. Game over. You're going to have an accident. So it's really important that you keep an ear out. And if you can hear or if you see the flashing green light on your dashboard, turn it off. Okay. I'd like you to park you have on the left. Your destination. Thirty-eight 
drive will then safe to do so. As it's a bend, the indicator is not needed, but on the plus side, he does react to this fan very well, so good job. Just drive in the Esnel, don't worry about what I'm thinking or anything like that. And that's very important advice. You may have seen it in my previous videos. Do not foul yourself. Let the examiner make the decision. What you may think is a serious fault may only be a driver fault. So just continue to drive, remain calm and learn from your mistakes. By him pulling away in second gear there is not an issue. Even if he stalled, it would only be a driver fault or a minor. So don't worry. Sorry. <laughs> but that sounds a bit cruel. picks up driver faults for that and this swerve. He's not checking his mirrors before doing that, so it'd be marked down as use of mirrors, change of direction. It's very important that you remember, even if you move an inch, check the side mirror that you're moving towards and make sure it's safe. Any cyclist or motorcyclist will not be able to react in that short duration of time that that swerve has taken place. Ashton picks up a driver fault for undue hesitation. There is quite a few opportunities for him to go. Again, there is nothing behind, so it doesn't give him a serious fault. But this is where strobe effect will really help, and we'll talk about that in the debrief. his left indicator on there and I thought it was because he was going to move into lane two but as you can see he stayed in lane three so that left indicator can now be confusing as it looks like he wants to change lane remember if you're going straight you do not indicate you can indicate for the lane change but not for the direction so therefore he picks up a driver fault for signals correctly
that engine, driver fault for control gears. Ashton does well here to stay in this lane with the ambulance. And a lot of you are probably thinking, well, you should move into the left lane. But we couldn't. The ambulance was taking up about half of the length of our car on the left hand side. So by slowing down and allowing the ambulance to move in front of us was actually the better option. So well done. but he is uncertain and because he then slows down it makes the situation worse the van that is in lane 2 at the moment is far enough back but gives up on waiting and then goes past and because of him slowing down to quite a low speed here I've had to give him a serious fault for planning at the end in the debrief I will explain the best way to tell when and how it's safe to move in front of another vehicle. use of speed he is going quite a bit over the speed limit but he does bring it back down in a fairly short enough duration so just a driver fault that's perfect thank you very much and drive on again when safe to do so speed in there.
Hopefully gets the driver fault for the following distance here as he's within the two second distance. Ashton again gets the driver fault for use of signals here and as you can see the bus tries to pull away and the reason for that is because he now thinks that Ashton's attempting to park. Remember, if you're pulling over just to give way, do not indicate. Gear fault. Okay, and park on the left just inside that white box. How do you feel that went? I'm not 50 feet down. No, yeah, no, because I, yeah, well, I, I feel like I was just about to fail before. Uh, before no. Okay, so what do you feel that you failed on? The, the, the only part, well, uh, the, the part I'll say the most is a, is a runabout and then the, the, the big runabout and probably, um, there's probably a part when I um, didn't observe, um, 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 basically, um, like good enough, I think, uh, but yeah. Okay, so. In all, I would say that your, your observations are actually normally quite good. There's a couple of mirror checks that we didn't do, okay? Um, mainly when you're moving in and out of things. So, um, oh. you know, when we finish the independent drive yeah. and then we basically came up to the end of the road where that van went to pull out and then they reversed into the space. Okay, yeah. You went up to the end of the road, you turned left down there and there's a few little potholes that you're trying to avoid, which is brilliant. Yeah. Remember though, check your mirrors before you move left and make sure you check the right mirror before you move right because you're making those changes without knowing. So if there's a cyclist or a motorcyclist overtaking you, you're not going to know. Okay. okay? Um, so I would say observations aren't too bad. The problem that you have is that you're not decisive enough. Okay. So great example is when you're having to change lane. Okay. okay. Now, how do you know it's safe to change lane? How do you know that the vehicle that you're moving in front of is far enough back that you can move in front of it safely? In front of? of mm. um, well, if, it, or, or, or if it's a front, obviously, um, you're, you're going to have to keep a good distance and make sure that, that you can at least see the tyres and um, the tarmac for parking as well as you're driving. So that's when you're stopping behind another vehicle. Oh, but yeah. for instance, when we were driving back down the A10, so towards the end of the test, yeah. yeah, so we came off the Cambridge roundabout, we were in the right lane, and we had the ambulance that was coming up on our left hand oh, yeah, side, yeah. yeah. So after that, you then thought, right, I need to move into the left lane when I prompted you, we're going to be taking the next road on the left, yeah. yeah? So you've got mirror, mirror, left signal, mm. okay? How do we know that it's safe to move across, or how do we know when it's not safe to move across? Because you had all those vehicles coming down on the left-hand side, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, because for firstly, yeah, you have to judge if you can turn on the left that you won't make a serious fault, and you have to judge that you won't make a a um, like car break. Yeah, good, exactly. So, how do you know that you're going to make that car break or not? How do you know that they're far enough back that it would be safe for you to move across? Far enough. Um, yeah, you have to. Um, no, I really am not. Like, I don't know, like, because you just have to judge really, like, the, the, the distance, really. Or, or not. Yeah, exactly. Have you driven on a motorway before? No, not a motorway, but, uh, but obviously on like dual carriageway, but no, 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 no. 70 miles an hour dual carriageways? Yeah, 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 50 and yeah, that's 60, yeah. But not 70? No, that's not, yeah. Okay, you need to do some of that on your driving lessons. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, the best way to judge when it's safe or not is if you can see the vehicle that you're moving in front of in the rear view mirror. If you can see them in the rear view mirror, they're far enough behind that it's safe. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The other thing which is making your life almost impossible 
is when you are trying to change lane, you're slowing down. So if you think about it this way, that's you. That's the cars coming from behind you. You're trying to move across. The speed limit on this road is what? The A10 at the south oh, part. 30, yeah. 30, it's changed down to 30. Yeah. So they're doing 30 miles an hour. You're doing 10 because you've slowed down. Oh, so what's okay. gonna happen? Yeah. They're gonna catch you up. If you keep to 30 and they're doing 30, they can't catch you up because you're both doing the same speed. Okay. So now you've got the freedom to move. So slowing down when you're changing lane is the worst thing you can do. Okay. okay, you only do it absolutely last resort if you're trying to say a join a dual carriageway. But okay. otherwise you want it or you're trying to go behind something that's already overtaken. Otherwise you want to try to maintain your speed as much as you possibly can. Um, so yeah, we had that. And the other thing as well, the Great Cambridge Roundabout. So. You want to stay in your lane and you're changing lanes on the roundabout and that's where you're sort of having difficulties when you're coming off the roundabout yeah. but number one a bit too slow again you need to get a bit more speed in the car mm. the second thing there though was you even said i'm in the wrong lane i need to go around again oh, yeah. and i thought brilliant he's going to go around again which would have been perfectly the right thing to do but then as you pulled away, you're still slowing down, you're still checking this left mirror, you're looking over your left shoulder, you're still trying to come off the exit. You're in lane four, and you need to be in lanes one or two for the exit. Oh, yeah. Scrap it, forget about it. Do exactly what you said, do another U-turn, then come off after. Okay, yeah. U-turn, okay. So you knew what you needed to do, and this again was something that you did quite a lot. You know what you've got to do, because you're saying it. Yeah. You're just not trusting it. Yeah. I know. Because like, yeah, I've, I've watched so much um, like test videos like yours and on YouTube over the past year. I like, like, literally, I've, 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 I've drilled it in my head, but but, but, but obviously, but, 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 but when it comes to actually doing it, it's a um, it's a like different thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. trust in your intuition because you literally said exactly what I wanted you to do. You just didn't do it. Okay. Yeah. A um, couple other things as well um, were your gears. You need to use these more. The oh. car's going through agony from screaming. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Um, when you're at 30 miles an hour, I would advise you to be in fourth gear. Okay. It's about 20% more efficient than using third, but you're oh. using second quite a lot. So yeah. you're using probably about 40 to 50% more fuel as a result. Oh, it's a substantial amount, especially now. The, price of petrol is through the roof and the price is going to go even higher okay so we want to look after fuel um so you've got six driver faults mirror miners for gears um one for clutch usage um and you've got two for accelerator so basically just using the gas in between gear changes okay. so when you're changing gear just make sure you come off the gas completely okay. um signals necessary now there was the manoeuvre that we did where we asked you to park on the right hand side, reverse back two car lengths, drive on. Yeah. yeah. So you've done the manoeuvre really well. Good observations, good position to the pavement as well. That was really tidy. Then when you pulled away, you've put your left indicator on and you've pulled off. Yeah. You didn't then cancel the indicator. So you're driving down that road with a left indicator oh, still on. Yeah. And the problem happens where you drove past the road on your left because if someone is coming out of that road, they see that left indicator, they think you're turning into that road, yeah. they're gonna pull out in front of you, yeah. smash. Yeah. So keep an ear out for the indicator. So that was a serious fault. You also got three though, for um, correctly. You're using your indicator when you don't need to use your indicator. So for instance, at the end, where that bus was giving way to you, and you've moved over towards the left to basically continue your path. So literally that road there okay, just after yeah. the college, yeah. you don't need to use your left indicator there. Because okay, yeah. by using the left indicator, the bus now thinks that you're parking. So that's oh, why he's then pulled out. You've then carried on and then they've hit the brakes again. Okay, yeah. um, also on the Great Cambridge Roundabout, instruction goes straight ahead, second exit. Yeah. You don't need the left indicator on. Shit, okay, because yeah. now you're telling people oh, I'm in the wrong lane. I need to move over there. Okay, okay so don't use the signal when you're going straight. Um, twice driver faults for use of speed, so just going over the speed limit. You okay. thought you failed when you did it. You actually said that's a serious. It's not. 
because you mm. fixed it fairly quickly, so it's a driver fault. Oh, okay. okay. Um, following distance, that was the learner car that pulled out in front of us again just after the college. Oh. You got quite close to that. Keep your two second distance. Oh, what's so, so, what, so what, what, Was that serious or minor? Minor fault. Okay. Yeah, driver fault. Um, then progress appropriate speed, serious. So this was just going too slow on the Cambridge roundabout. Oh. Okay. Um, under your hesitation, fairly early on in the test where you could have gone but you didn't okay, okay. and also when you went through those width restrictions I and mean, we were going back onto the a10 going south and you had the cars that were coming from the right and you were saying i can't judge how fast they're going oh yeah yeah now good little tip you may have seen this one on my hesitation video alternate your view oh, okay yeah. i don't know what the technical term for this is um i call it the strobe effect Okay, okay, so if you're in a club, for instance, and you've got a strobe light, if someone's walking towards you, you can tell how fast they're walking towards you between each flash of the strobe. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you look right, look left, look right, effectively you're doing that strobe effect. Oh, okay. Now, when it comes to the cognitive abilities on this, it's basically what we call the executive functioning part of your cognitive ability. So the way that your brain works. Okay. Okay, so you have your optical intake and then you have your basic awareness intake. Okay, yeah. so different lobes of your brain if we're going into the sort of technicalities of it. Um, you're, by doing that strobing effect, you're going to be using two separate parts of your brain to be able to judge their speed. Yeah. If you're just looking right, you're only using one lobe. And that's where that confusion is because oh. you're thinking, oh, I could have gone there. Okay, yeah. yeah. So just alternate your view, see how much distance oh. they've travelled between the last time you checked and that for the next time you've checked, yeah. and then you can judge how fast they're going. Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. So a little bit of a sort of techy geeky te uh, sort of yeah. reason why that works. Um, position normal driving, a little bit too far on the right hand side when we were on the A10. You had that grey Ford KA that then overtook you and they were really close on the line. Okay, okay. so you were quite tight. Could have done with being a little bit more to the left. Um, and then awareness and planning, uh, minor or driver fault and a major. Um, again, it's just basically making those more definitive decisions. Yeah. Okay, so in total, 22 driver faults. Okay. Okay, and you got one, two, three serious faults. Okay. Um, yes, 22 minor faults sounds like a lot, but the majority of them all for the same reason. Yeah, so six for gears alone. Okay. Okay, so almost a quarter of your faults were just on gears. Yeah. Okay. If you include the accelerator, so not doing the flick, yeah, no. that was a third of your test is just on gear faults alone. No. So I want you to work on those gears um, and then just basically fill in those little bits and pieces. I'll put that in the report anyway for you for later. Oh, yeah. All right. Helpful? Yeah, yeah, helpful, yeah. Good. So if that's also helped you, please put a comment. Pleasure. Um, put a comment in the description underneath. Um, like, share like crazy. And if you want to do a mock test as well, contact me, like Ashton did as well, um, by text message, by WhatsApp on this phone number, or you can email me as well on this email. And I look forward to seeing you in the car soon. Thank you.